Our Father in heaven, we bless your name for this night. Say where two or three people are gathered together in your name, you are there in their midst. Lord, we know you are here with us. You are here to stretch us further. You are here to develop us. You are here to grow us. You are here to teach us your life. Lord, we submit ourselves unto you. We open our minds to your will, to your truth in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh God, that your word have a perfect course in our midst tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, break us and mold us, O oh God. Make us a better people, uh, fit for your use in Jesus' name. Lord, please, only you be glorified in this moment. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Let's be seated. Amen. We are welcome to God's presence. We are welcome to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. We are welcome to the spirit of just men be perfect. Uh, I hope our week has started well. Amen. I also want to use this opportunity to welcome uh, to this disciples convocation this week, everyone joining us online, and everyone that would watch this program when it's already recorded. We appreciate God that you have chosen to share your moment with us today. Our desire is that whatever the Lord is sharing in this place, that you have your own portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Today we want to look at when you grow up. When you grow up. Now, there are quite a few things that are attached to your growth. There are quite a few things that would only happen only after you have grown up. And so a man who desires something and the thing is tied to his growth would therefore not uh, be like every other person, worried and clueless. Such a person would be uh, guided since what he desires has been revealed to him to be tied to his growth. Now, the point is this. If there is something that you and I desire now, and we are being told by God that when you become 45, 55, then you are qualified. Would you be crying to the Lord, give it to me now, give it to me now? No. The reason why we ask and we have not received. The Bible says we ask amiss. And one of the things that makes us to ask amiss is ignorance. We do not know what we need when we need them. We do not know what we need and we do not know when we need them. Now, it is possible for somebody to ask something and to say, okay, I need this and grab it and keep it. The question is, now that you have kept it, what use of it, what use has it been to you now? I will come over that. Now, one thing that I've realized separate children from adults is how they treat things that are given to them. Now, a child that is busy doing something, you give the child something. The child won't say, no, I already have something. No, the child will collect the new thing and drop the hood. Is that that the child drops, collects the new thing, huh? drops the hood, or the child collects the new thing huh? and then keeps the new thing and then continue with the hood. Hmm? But a child will hardly tell you don't give it to me now. I don't need it now. Adults are the ones that can tell you, no, I already have something. Don't worry about that new thing you want to give to me. I already have something that I'm running with. I'm already, I already have something that I'm busy with. But a child would collect the new thing and collect the new thing and collect another new thing and collect another new thing. It either it replaces the old with the new or it keeps the old. I mean the new that is being collected. Now the point is this. It's only a child that will collect what it does not need now. Now. So there are certain things that we don't need now. And the more we know them, the better our lives become. So that we don't just desire things that are outside the, the, the frame of our timing. And so we will have peace. The reason why many of us don't have peace is because we desire things now that are not meant for now. Certain things are meant for when we have grown up. Now today we want to look at when we grow up, what are the things that will become visible? What are the things that we may not need to, uh, to, to have anxiety over now? Simply because 
in a matter of time, with the tie to our home growth, we would have them. So when we grow up, what are the things that we should anticipate? What are the things that we should expect to see? And so that we are not ignorant of what is going on and what must go on. So that uh, we don't also put the blame on the side, whereas we are to be blamed. All right, let's, I want us to read a portion of the book of Matthew. Matthew. Matthew chapter 13, and I will read from verse 31 to 32. Matthew 13, 31 to 32. Now, but before we read 31 to 32, there's a portion of that Matthew that I want us to quickly just go over so that we have a basis for what we want to see in 31. Matthew 13, verse 11. The Bible says, let me start from verse 10. The Bible says, and the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Why do you speak to these people in parables? He said, I speak to them in parables because it has not been given to them to know the, script, the mysteries of the kingdom. And so, if the Lord speaks plainly with you or to you, it is not for you to be, uh, to, it is not for you to take it for granted, but rather for you to be conscious of your identity and the reason for that clarity. So, revelation is not something to be taken for granted. Revelation is to be treasured. That's the first thing that we must understand. So, should God decide to open our minds up to the mystery of the kingdom of heaven tonight, we do not take it for granted. And so, let's quickly go to that verse 31. Matthew 31, uh, Matthew 13, 31 to 32. The Bible says, don't forget, we already read in verse 13 that it has been given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Now, we want to now know more about the kingdom of heaven. So that we can apply the same principle in our lives. Amen. You are welcome. Another parable he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his feet, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the earth and becomes a tree so that the best of the year come and nest in its branches. I'm sure we have read the scripture quite a number of times. But you know, sometimes we just go over scripture. We don't spend time on it. So today, what, we just want to spend time on those two verses. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Now, so that we don't get boxed up or we don't get uh, fixed on that word mustard seed down. Since some of us don't know mustard seed, we start wondering. <sighs> Since I don't know the mustard seed, then how is the kingdom of heaven? Now, you can just replace that mustard seed with a seed. You can even say the kingdom of God is like an apple seed. The kingdom of God is like a, another seed that you know. Hmm? A seed. The point is the kingdom of God is like a seed. That's the first thing that you must note. And then the next thing is that which a man took and sowed in his feet, which indeed is the least of all the seeds, but when it is grown, we are looking at when you grow up. <laughs> That's why we are looking at when you grow up. When it is grown, you could be a seed now, and you could be very small. That is not the focus. Our focus is on when you grow up. Now, a, a seed is glorious, a seed is beautiful, mm? a seed is essential, but people don't consume seeds, as it were. You can, although <laughs> what we eat as a maize, you know, those of us that drink pap, but you know it's a processed seed. You know, you don't just take a seed and just pour in your mouth. Seeds are better off when they are sown in the feed. Mm? He says the kingdom of heaven is like a seed that is sown in the seed. And when it grows up, so we want to uh, 
since the kingdom of heaven is like a seed, we want to put ourselves also like seeds. But and why we want to put ourselves in the form of seeds? Bible says Jesus, although God, he became a man. He put on the form of a man. We too want to put on the form of a seed tonight. But we want to also realize that even though we have put on successfully the form of seeds, seeds are not uh, sought out huh, to be eaten. Nobody goes around looking for seed to eat. In fact, you cannot nest in seeds. Seeds cannot become something of uh, importance such that you, you get shelter in. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even though you could begin a seed, you are not valuable a seed. Your relevance is not in your seed, in you just being seed. In fact, your, your influence is not in you just being a seed. A biola who has become a seed, that is not your, that's not where you get your influence. It could be the place of your identity, your source. Talking about who you are, but it is not where you get your influence. You do not become an authority as a seed. You do not start, uh, you do not start commanding followership as a seed. People don't see you and want to become like you as a seed. If all you do is to start and remain a seed, then you will just be alone. Remember the scripture that says, except a grain of wheat falls down and dies, it abides alone. And so, a man who has taken the form of a seed, who, who has even done a good thing, by the way, he has taken the first step, assuming the role of a seed. Alright? But if he remains as a seed, he will remain alone. Uncelebrated, unnoticed, it will become a man or a woman that has no serious impact in this world generation. If people will feel what you are adding as value, then you must translate from being a seed to a tree. That's why the focus tonight is not about giving you a title, the best seed in the world. No, it is you becoming a tree because the scripture says when it is grown when it is grown, not when it is grown up, when it is grown. So the, the beauty of the life of that seed begins to emanate, begins to exude when it is grown. The seed is on its own, laboring on its own, finding so, trying to survive on its own. The seed must of necessity survive on its own as long as it's a seed. Everything about the seed is about self-survival. It's about self-sustenance. It's about trying to even uh, uh, remain in spite of the weather, the circumstances surrounding the environment, the atmospheric condition, the weather, the climatic condition. The seed wants to survive. And now, we must also not forget that seeds could be selfish because every nutrient in the soil is only used up by the seed when it is sown. But if that seed that is sown refuses to also grow, don't forget a seed is good. But the goodness of a seed is just to the degree of it just being a seed. It's limited to it being a seed. A seed that decides to be sown is a seed that has taken the next step. You know, the first thing is for something to assume the role of a seed. Bible says God has given the bread to the heater and seed to the sower. Now, if that bread is eaten, then the bread, the substance that is called bread has assumed the role of bread. The substance that assumes, that is sown, is a substance that has assumed the role of a seed. It must first become a seed before it can be sown. If you sow my clothes, it will decay. You can't sow it because it's not a seed. Something must first become a seed before it can be sown. Do we understand? So the first step is in something taking the form of something. Now, if you and I decide to take on the form of a seed, hmm, then we are taking the first step. Now, if we remain at that level, then nothing will be, uh, no good thing will be traced to us. Then we will continue to decay over time. Just being a seed. Now, if we now take the next step and we are now being sown, 
That's another thing. It is not enough for a seed to be sown, even though that's a great step in the life of a seed. A seed that, a, a seed that has been sown must decide to grow. Now, we are describing that state when a seed is trying to grow. It's a state when a seed could be seen by others to be selfish. Because the focus of that seed is on self this. And so when that seed goes to a seminar, the seminar will be self-confidence, public speaking self-confidence. The, the seed is not trying to become self-confident in public speaking for another seed, no, for itself. When the seed goes for finance training, it will learn how to invest, how to, it will be for itself. Everything the seed learns at that stage when it's being sown is for its own survivor. If that is all the life of a seed will be, then it will just remain with itself by itself. What we are saying is a seed must not remain at the level of trying to grow forever. Otherwise, it will remain at the level when everybody considers it to be selfish, self-centered, and only concerned about self. Now, we will see why we are saying this in the next line of that verse that we read. Now, the scripture says, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his feet, which indeed is the least of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs. Let's stop with that. Let's pause with that. It is greater than the herbs. Now, the first thing that we want to consider tonight about when you grow up is that you become great. And if I want to use it very seriously, I would say you become greater than your peers. What happens when I grow up, I become greater than my peers? You see, <laughs> seeds are seeds as long as they are seeds. Once seeds are sown, different seeds will start showing up. The time that a seed commits itself huh, to feeding, we now show in how that seed is growing or has grown differently from the other seed that has not committed enough time in feeding. Now let me come again. If a seed, by the way, Brother John, is planted in a place where there is not enough nutrient, the same seed, orange seed, you now plant another you plant the same seed, another orange tree, orange seed, in another place that there is nutrient, enough nutrient. Even though both of them were planted at the same time, due to their um, access, different access to nutrients, huh, they will grow up differently. Hmm? So access, don't forget when this one is feeding on little nutrient, because there is little nutrient, it will feed less little is available so it feeds less this one that has enough nutrient where it is it will feed more so every time you come to that seed the seed is saying i'm busy i'm feeding you go to this one this one you say ah how are you so how's your friend ah, ah, oh, oh, eh, eh, so eh, eh, so they came eh, eh, they, that seed will feed less and <laughs> socialize more <laughs> do we understand what is going there is little nutrient available. It's not directly the fault of that seed. It's just where that seed is planted. Hmm? Because there is little nutrient, so it commits it commits <laughs> lesser time to feeding. Hmm? Because it does less in feeding, it will do more in other things. It will have more time to socialize. Whereas the other one that is having a lot of nutrients all around, because he's so busy feeding, we have lesser time socializing. Now, but when you come back after one or two years to check two of them, one would have become, this one, since it talks more, socializes more than eating, uh, it will have stunted growth. It will grow, stunted growth. This one that does more of feeding than socializing hmm, will be tall and fat. The question is, whose fault? I'm not saying the seed is at fault because the seed is perhaps maybe a non-living thing. What about you? You are not a non-living thing. You can choose to be planted in a place. You can choose to be planted in another place. 
Do you understand? If you are planted in a wrong environment where you are, you are, you are, you are um, <laughs> that was the English word for it, but you don't have access to adequate supply of spiritual nutrient, mental nutrient, uh, all kind of nutrient, eh? then you will have more time to socialize and less time to feed. Let's come back and check your life after one or two years you would actually become a, a tree that has stunted growth. Now, since you have stunted growth, you will not be as great as other trees. So that tree that has, that has a, a correct growth will not, have a, will not be greater than you. Is this something, is it a partiality for, <laughs> you know, it's not partiality here, it is how much of access do you have to your own, to your own survivor, as it were, to your own, uh, to you taking in things that will grow you? How much time do you have for it? If I have more time growing myself, I have more time developing myself, I spend more time doing it, and you spend lesser time, it's just a matter of time when they come to check our lives, they would have realized that I've actually become taller, I've become fatter than you simply because of my access to nutrients. And so, that seed that is sown, when it is grown, it is not after one year or two years. It is not a matter of time. When is time, but that time is not, it didn't say after three years. It didn't mention a particular time. It just says when. The time that it grows. So, it is the tree that we take the responsibility, I mean, that we determine when it is grown. I don't know whether you understand. Now, a tree that refuses to grow, even if you give it 10 years, it won't still grow. I wonder why Jesus caused that fig tree. That fig tree wouldn't have given back to anything. So what's the point? Keeping it there. So we just not produce, even if you leave them there. Do we understand what we are saying? <laughs> so he says, after it has grown, it becomes greater than us. Us are great in their own in their own uh, in their own rights right <laughs> but this one would be greater than them so if you will be greater than other great people then you must grow you must grow you see it will come it will it will eventually be revealed time will reveal it the effort you are putting to your own growth now time will come to tell it Time we showcase it. Nothing. Bible says God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sows, he will reap. Whatever, whatever. If you sow nonsense, you will reap nonsense. It's just a matter of time. If you sow treasure into your man, into your inner man, into your spirit, into your mind, you will reap it. It's a matter of time. That tree, when it is grown, it will soon become clear to everybody that it has been feeding well because it will be greater than the house. It will be greater. That's the first thing. When you grow up, you become greater than your peers. We are not saying they won't be great. We are saying you become greater. And it's going to be because you have grown up. Not because God loves you than them. Because you have grown up. And you don't grow up Eh? when you are not feeding. That's what we spend time talking about feeding. God does not anoint you say, I anoint you for supernatural growth irrespective of your feeding. There is no anointing like that. In fact, when you are anointed so much, then you will commit enough time to feed. When you see somebody that eats, you know, I remember <laughs> in those days when we see somebody that eats a lot, they will say, ah, is it, uh, you know, they normally, is it that, uh, uh, you know, in those, you know, those people were not spiritually, they were not born again. <laughs> so, the only thing they would say is that, is it that uh, they've used something like a charm on you that you are just eating like, uh, you are just eating. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, like, they, they ask questions, they want to know what is going on. This your eating is not normal. You are eating too much. A natural person should be, okay, you are not okay, you are still eating. Check that guy. Except the man is suffering from a spiritual or a biological disease or whatever, when you eat well, it will, it will show. It will show. 
you will become taller, you will become big. If you are not tall, you will be big. You can't be eating and you are slimming, you are slimming and you are eating. You are, then something is wrong. Check most of the people. Are not, I don't know about why. Even the white men, check most people that are not fat, that are not. They eat, they feel a little. And they are okay. They love it. And they call it Eddie Diet. Eddie, right? Those who are not living Eddie, check it too. They eat volume. You will be big to the degree of the things you consume. You don't impact somebody and impact you. Grow now. Grow now. In fact, when I check you in next year, you, are, you would have grown. That impartation must first touch the person's appetite. Sometimes when my children are not eating, I, my wife would ask me or I would ask my wife, are these people, or is it that they need uh, motivator me or something? They need to eat. They need something that will give them appetite to eat. Sometimes, they may just be eating as if, what well, they will just be eating like my daughter can just be eating, eating, eating. And then when you, in that week that she's eating, check her, cheek, big, everything big. She will, she will just be doing like this everywhere. Once she eats, it will show. She does not eat, it will show. Like today now, I can't remember seeing her eating anything. Go and check her before you go. You will see how she's looking. So don't, don't say, what is it? Why is it I'm not going? Are you eating? Eat well, you will grow. It's a matter of time. But one thing we must notice, when you are eating, you are usually eating in the secret place. You are eating in your house. Nobody sees you. What do they see? They see your spiritual pot belly, if it were, spiritual mozu. Huh? They see whatever. They will see it. They will see the impact of it on your body, if it is a biological food, a physical food, but they do not see you when you are eating. I can't remember seeing Bro Francis eating, but I know he eats. <laughs> now, if he refuses to eat, I will also notice he's not eating. Perhaps if he goes on a fast, I will notice. But when he's eating, I will see it on his body, even though I do not see the food. Men may not see your food, but they will see the impact of your food on your life. They will see it. It will be all over you what you are eating. So if you are eating, you are feeding, you are spending time when others are gisting, you are spending time to eat spiritual food. You are feeding your spirit, you are feeding your mind. Men may not know when you are doing it, but we see the impact of it on your life. They will see the impact of it in every matter that you are involved in. So your growth is not something that is given to chance. It is given to your degree of consumption of food. How much of food you eat how much of growth you experience. I remember the scripture where Jesus uh, asked um, when in John Jesus fed the disciples and after they finished eating. <laughs> he said, Peter, love it thou me. If I want to quote uh, KJV, love it thou me more than this. Do you love me more than this? Ah, Peter said, you know I love you. He said, feed my lamb. <laughs> uh, after a while, he asked Peter, do you love me more than this? He yeah, said, you know I love you, Lord. He said, feed my sheep. And another time he asked again, he said, feed my lamb. Or tend my, let me take the le- the first one is feed my lambs. Second one is tend my sheep. The last one is feed my sheep. But you know everything is about feeding and feeding and feeding. The sheep will not grow if the, f- the sheep does not eat. Don't pray people to growth. Feed them to growth. If people are not growing, don't just pray it. Feed them. And there's a lesson I learned today I would like to share with us. It's a personal <laughs> domestic lesson, but I would like to share. Sometimes we, for some of us that have responsibility over some people or you, there's something when certain people are not growing or they are not doing the right thing, people look at you. And so sometimes you feel concerned. In case you are the one, then this, this lesson may be good for you. Now, I, I, sometimes we ask ourselves, why is it that this person does not want to do this? Why is it that this person doesn't want to eat this food? Why is it that I, I expect my, my son, my daughter to do this, but he's not doing it. There are ways of helping. You don't need to go and do something. Like today, I, I told you I was re, <laughs> refurbishing. <laughs> I was refurbishing a place in my house, a playroom, so to say, for my daughter. Huh? She goes there to scatter the place. So I felt she lacked leadership. So I, I didn't want to tell her, do this, don't do this, before I flog her too much. So let me show her 
how things can be done. And let me. Now, when I was true, after she watched the cartoon, then this evening she just came to meet me when I took her to the place to see the play and she liked it. She was there for a few minutes, I was inside, and then she came to meet me in my room. I said, uh, Daddy, please, can I sleep on my bed? <laughs> I said, Go ahead. Actually, I wanted her to sleep on bed, but I didn't tell her. I just made the bed nice. That's all. <laughs> she said, Can I sleep? Actually, when I later when I went, she didn't sleep too long, but she slept on the bed and then okay, okay, and she stood up. Now, if there's something else I want her to use, huh, it's for me to decorate that area more. When you decorate, the baby will want to go there and say, Ah, let me find out more. Do you understand? I, I actually chased that out of the room before we came for the meeting. <laughs> what am I saying? You don't need to say, Oh, don't go there, go there. No, make a place conducive for him or her and then you will find him or her always there. Say, why are you always watching TV? Go and play. Hey, create a playing place. You don't need to flog the child. Just create a place. And then don't let it be boring. You to come there sometimes to change things, upgrade things, add new things. You will saw something on the road, buy it, put it there. When she sees a new thing, she will want to come back there to find out if daddy or mommy has put a new thing. You don't need Instead of us saying, why are my children not doing this? Why are they not responding to this? Make it creative. Your child does not like to eat. Abby, create a new set of food. Huh? The ones she has been eating, make them look differently. Get her a new plate. You can do these things or you continue to beat the child. Why are you not eating? Why are you not eating? You will not eat now. People will be abusing that you are slimming up. You are slimming down everywhere. Don't need to shout. Hmm? Just make the atmosphere for heating conducive for her or for him. Do you understand? So we could have this iron fist approach to making people do things. Or we could show them a new way. Or we could, we could create a new environment for them to do it. So don't claim that your people don't want to grow. My people don't want to grow. What kind of atmosphere is created for them? For instance, a church that has a facility for everything else except a library. Who stops a church from having a library? Say, ah, the people, they don't like to read. We come there, create it first. Ha! Huh? Do you know if it is a place for people to watch something, they will come or to read. Our people cannot sit down. Uh -uh. Create a place first. You know, we will say it, it's too risky to build a facility that they will not use. Eh? It's too risky. Why will you build something that you are not sure they will? Why can't you also build and see if they will come? Because it's also risky for you not to give them the, the building them the capacity to read. Like today I was telling Brother, I wanted to pick a chair. And I said it's better I pick a chair that is conducive for people to sit down than to just pick a chair that is convenient for me. Now, if I want somebody not to give me excuse for not reading, then I must give the person a chair. Huh? You know that's what I told you, that the person will be able to sit for a longer time. We want people to do things, but we do not create the atmosphere for them to do it. Your people are not growing huh? because there is not enough environment for them to grow. Create the right environment. They will grow. And when they grow, it will become visible. If I use the word Viola loves, it will become palpable everywhere. People will see it everybody do you know I'm happy it is not true if you are happy you don't need to tell us do you know we know you are happy there's a way the face of a man reflects the state of his heart if you are so edified in your, in your mind in your heart we will see it all over you you are depressed you don't need to use pancake or makeup no matter the amount of pancake you use we will see the depression so there is no investment to your learning as it were. There is no investment to your growth which is tied to the things you consume. That is a waste. Everything is piling up. Everything is piling up eventually to be revealed. I remember a scripture that says, and the child grew and became strong in spirit and was in the desert until the day of his manifestation. When he was in the desert, nobody knew how and what he was doing. They didn't know why he was doing things. They didn't know how. They didn't know anything about him. And then he emerged. Even though they didn't know his process of growth, they could not deny his effectiveness, his authority. Jesus, they were asking Jesus, 
by whose authority do you do this? He asked them, John, <laughs> the man that you don't know how he grew up, <laughs> by whose authority does he do what, do, did he do or does he do what he does? Ah, and they consult themselves. If we say, uh, ah, people know, people know that John, <laughs> you may not know how, you may not know when, but his valley is always filled with water. He has a word in the season. He's, he's never afraid of anybody. You can't deny the impact, the, the, the impact of a man that is well fed. You can't deny it. When people eat uh, solid food in uh, Nigeria, for instance, the, you see them there, they say, oh yeah, what is it? Let's carry it. Hey, you can't give the person tea and you, you expect him to do like this. <laughs> uh, if you want somebody to do a physical food, then you give him a physical food. <laughs> All those tea and the rest, you know the limits. I don't know how much of physical things can a man do on Indomie. <laughs> huh? So the type of food you eat also determines the kind of capacity you possess. You want to do some serious things, then you eat some serious food. Ah, you want somebody to do a labor work and you are giving the person tea. Brother, I hope you are okay. Please, when you are true, please. There are some blocks you want you to carry. <laughs> Before the brother carries one or two or three blocks already, <laughs> say, <laughs> Yoruba people will say it is what the, the bed fits on. That bed we, uh, we fly with. <laughs> it's a, it doesn't look interesting in English, but it's nice in Yoruba. <laughs> So if the bed refuses to feed on something, the bed will be so light that it can't even fly. Brother Francis, what you want to do must influence what you are feeding on. Don't just feed on things. We are saying feed, feed, feed. Don't feed on things. Feed, don't feed on junks. <laughs> feed on the things that are appropriate for the job at hand. I remember the times when I was in Bible school and we we expected to do some serious work. We had yam. <laughs> Sabella, you know, you needed to see the yam. You know, one, one yam like this is almost as big as. Once you finish a yam, you are okay. You can even be sweating. Yam and pepper. You could walk for hours under the influence of that yam. We wouldn't have done anything with tea. And, or you give somebody papa, moi moi. And he wants to do physical job. Please, you understand, man. After Papa Moimoy, you know you have eaten, but you can't do the work. You want me to do a serious mental job? You don't need to give me yam. You don't need to give me pounded yam. I can even be feeling dizzy. If you give me that, it could be appropriate. If you give me that indomie, it could be appropriate. But don't give me that one for a physical job. Some spiritual responsibilities are physical spiritual responsibilities. I don't know how to put it. <laughs> They require a lot of spiritual strength. Some require spiritual wisdom. If it requires spiritual strength, then you must be strong spiritually. You know, a man can be wise and because of wisdom say, do this, don't do this. He's never doing anything. He's telling you, do this, don't do this. He doesn't need too much. Huh? But a man that must do this, a man that must spiritually carry mountains, must have spiritual food. So to say, to produce the required strength that you need. Jesus said, how be it, this kind does not take place except by fasting, except by prayer. A man could have said, I'm a man of God, I can say this mountain be removed, cast out, you go remove. But he said, this kind does not, does not respond to just, just mere wishes. You must pray, you must fast. So it is there are some things that require some spiritual forces hmm, for them to be spiritually tackled. Please, brother, sister, don't just give things to chance. Don't leave things to chance. Take responsibility for your own spiritual effectiveness. You are the same person that will go to your village and be abusing people and be talking down at people and you are not eating enough spiritual food that can undo the kind of attack that will come. And so you become vulnerable and you make your family vulnerable. Spiritual responsibilities have different spiritual demands and the demands are spiritual food. You must feed on the right kind of food per season so that you will be fit to do the spiritual responsibilities that God has for you. 
He says, which indeed is the least of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs, and that the latter part of it, and becomes a tree. It is greater, it becomes a tree. You will become an entity. You will not become a non-entity when you grow up. You will become an entity. Suddenly, you will become different from the rest. You will be, you will be, you will be identified from afar. People from afar can recognize glory from afar. They saw the glory of Jesus Christ from a very far place. Some of us are here in Nigeria. We recognize the glory of some people we far away in America, in Bahamas, in different parts of the world. So it means they have become trees. Ours cannot be seen easily from afar. You can see a tree from a long distance. If people will recognize you from afar, then you must grow up to become a tree. Why must I grow up? <laughs> you must grow up so that you must become a tree. Because it is only trees that are recognized from afar. When you read the scriptures where the Bible talks about you, uh, your sons, your daughters will come from afar, and you're just saying amen, and you refuse to grow up, nothing will come from afar. Because you will not even be seen from afar. That's the second thing. Then the third thing, he says, so that and becomes a tree, so that the best of the year come and nest in its branches. Your life becomes such an entity, by the way, that becomes a platform to, for the raising of other men, other leaders. Nest is not just a place of habitation, it is a place for producing the next generation. Nest is not just for habitation, it is for the production, for the building up of the next generation. Every time you hear the nest or you read nest, whether you go to the dictionary or anything, you will be seeing production of nest generation, new offspring. It's a place for batting new vision, batting new revelation, new generation. That's what becomes of your life when you grow up. Others will be growing out of you. It says from its branches, from your influence. Others will be growing. Others will be growing. Others will be finding their expression from your influence. As you grow, others will find their expression. Others will find meaning to their lives. So you refuse to grow up. You deny those people of the opportunity to discover more about themselves and to give expression to their innate abilities. Some people have been raised by God to fly on the wings of others. And those others... <laughs> The, the people they are expected to fly on their wings refuse to build wings. How will they ever fly? That is why we must not forget what we started with. A seed, when it remains a seed, survives for itself. When it grows up, it becomes an entity, huh? a blessing to others. When you are a seed, you remain a blessing to yourself and you bless yourself for yourself. When you become a tree, then you become a blessing to others. Your glory will be seen from afar. Your influence will be recognized from afar. Your influence will go beyond you. And others, others will find direction from your influence. So you refuse to grow up. You deny the generations. You deny the others from finding meaning under your influence. So you must grow up. You must grow up. Stalara, you'll be coming up. So gather yourself together in the spirit. Aha, amen. You must grow up. You must grow up. Not for yourself. You must grow up for others. You must grow up not because of yourself. You must grow up because of others. When you grow up, and there's a scripture I want to read in a few minutes, one, two minutes. John chapter 21 that we just read now. It talks about when you grow up. So that we know that this script or this statement is also mentioned even by Jesus. You know when he said, feed my sheep in verse 18, he now says something. Most assuredly I say to you, John 21, 18, most assuredly I say to you, when you were younger, you guarded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, another word for when you grow up or when you have grown up, do we see that? When you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will guard you and carry you 
where you do not wish. Now, <laughs> if we remove where you do not wish, how many of us will not like the... We don't say we love the... Okay, let's, let's see the statement again. When you grow up, when you are old, you will stretch your hand. Please, can we be... Let's be looking at me. You, you will stretch your hands and another will guard you hmm? and carry you where you do not wish. You remove where you do not wish and carry you to where you wish. How many of us will say, I do not want that? Hmm? Are we not getting what we are saying? Okay, it says another will carry you to where you do not wish. Okay, do you want to be carried to where you do not wish? I'm saying, assuming that one is not there, won't you say you love the experience? You do like this, somebody guards and carries you. Does it not look like... <laughs> eh? Please, can people carry you if they can't even carry themselves? Eh, it's because they have grown and they cannot carry you. Does he not talk about what we, what we mentioned the la, the last? About best of the nest, uh, best of the year coming to nest in the branches. Such becoming a platform for others to find expression. Others, others, is matters that go beyond you. And that's what Jesus said here. And Bible says, this is spoke signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. When he has spoken this, he said to him, follow him. May the Lord bless this word and our spirit in Jesus' name. When you grow up, you become greater than your peers. When you grow up, you become a tree. When you grow up, you become a platform for others to find expression. Until you grow up, these kind of things will never happen. Stalara, you're welcome. <laughs> 